the first edition of Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. I'm Adam Douglas from Peter Harrington and I'd like to show you this copy which is in remarkably fresh original condition. If we look at the title page we see of course it's, it's not called Gulliver's Travels in the, that's the familiar title for it. The full title page is Travels into Several Remote Nations of the World in four parts, spread over two volumes, by Lemuel Gulliver, first a surgeon and then a captain of several ships. Now there are actually two, three editions um, of this published uh, in the same year, within the first year of publication. This is the true first edition um, with both parts, both volumes, with all the points to distinguish it as the first edition. If we look at the frontispiece, which is provided, uh, really the whole book is, is attempting to resemble a travel book as closely as it can. So we have a, a portrait of the author, Captain Lemuel Gulliver of Red Riff, and this is in the first state. Um, this gives his uh, age here at the bottom, at the age of, pu of publication, at 58, which is exactly the age Swift was when the book was published. So a little bit of an in-joke for his friends there, and his friends thought that this was uh, a portrait of him, a rather, um, a rather favorable portrait of him, but it's meant to be the uh, um, anonymous, the uh, pseudonymous author, Lemuel Gulliver. And in the second state, Swift, perhaps thinking that he hadn't made his satirical intentions quite clear enough, changed this and put into the panel a quote from the satires of Perseus um, saying uh, how honest the author's intentions were. And Lemuel Gulliver's name then gets put into the oval around the portrait. So that is a distinguishing feature. So it's quite rare to find the first state. Now this copy um, is in uh, contemporary panelled calf. It's not in perfect condition. It's got a few uh, scuffs and a few areas of rubbing, but um, that's actually very pleasing and quite unusual. The book is very often found at least rebacked. Uh, when I was first uh, taught about bookselling, I was told that everybody uh, produced their own individual bindings for copies that they bought, but this is what we would call a trade binding. There's no doubt that this is the kind of pattern, this panelled calf with the concentric patterns on the side. These oblongs dyed and sprinkled in different tones. This is actually how you would buy it from a bookshop. And you could decide whether you wanted to spend a lot of money on putting gilt all down the spine or whether you could uh, put on a label. And you'll see that this buyer has just chosen to have the two um, volumes numbered, that's all. They've got these gilt numbers one and two. So there's scuffs here in the panels above it and these are because somebody has later decided to put labels on it which of course becomes later uh, the fashion and they've put very rudimentary labels. I can show you one here um, which isn't uh, terribly pretty. It's just a little typed label which they've stuck on with glue. So that has been removed. Um, here we see the uh, library labels. If you look at the inside board of the book, you can see at the bottom there the book plate of William O'Brien, uh, who's an Irish judge, and he then gave it to the Milltown Park Library, the Jesuit uh, Library. So it has an Irish provenance in the 19th century, and there's the O'Brien bequest label. And there are a couple of stamps, um, here is one of them, um, from that library stamps, from that label, but they're not too disfiguring, and the Irish um, provenance is uh, very appropriate for the book, of course. So uh, we've left this completely unrestored. Of course, it, it could be uh, polished up and all fixed up and all these little scuffs and... Uh, and marks removed, but we think it's a very pleasing example of an entirely unrestored contemporary trade binding. For more details of this particular book and other 18th century literature, please see the Peter Harrington website.